Today, we'll be talking about a case in which a patient's own immune system was unleashed to fight an aggressive, deadly type of cancer. Sasha was a 26-year-old man who had been working as a fashion model since his teens. To maintain the look that helped him land modeling jobs, he had always relied on frequent visits to the tanning salon. One day, as he was being prepped for a swimsuit shoot, the makeup artist commented that she had to conceal what she called a pretty nasty mole on Sasha's upper back. Sure enough, that night, when Sasha washed off his makeup and looked in the mirror, he saw a large, raised, dark mole in a location on his back where he used to only have a small, flat freckle. Sasha went to see his primary care doctor the next day. On her physical exam, she saw that Sasha's mole was irregular in shape with uneven borders and with a mixture of black, tan, and bluish colors. She measured the lesion at 8 millimeters across. She also noted from the history that Sasha's mole had recently changed in color and size. So Sasha's mole fit all of the A, B, C, D, E criteria, making it very concerning for melanoma, the deadliest type of skin cancer. She referred him to see a dermatologist the very next day. The dermatologist agreed that Sasha's history of tanning bed use and the appearance of his mole were worrisome for melanoma, so she removed the lesion and sent it to be analyzed by the pathologist. Unfortunately, the result confirmed a diagnosis of malignant melanoma, which had already extended 2.5 millimeters deep into Sasha's skin. So the dermatologist took him to the operating room to remove wider margins around the tumor. To determine whether the cancer had spread locally through the lymph vessels of the skin, she performed a sentinel lymph node biopsy in which she identified the nodes that directly drained the tumor by injecting a radioactive dye into the area. Then she took a biopsy sample of any lymph nodes that lit up with the dye. One of these sentinel nodes was also positive for cancer cells. To look for distant spread of the cancer to other organs, Sasha's physician sent him for a combination positron emission tomography, computed tomography scan, which brought even more bad news. Multiple nodules were seen in his lungs, representing distant metastatic disease. There was some good news in that the brain, a common site for melanoma metastases, was not involved. In the past, this grave diagnosis of metastatic melanoma would have condemned Sasha to a course of highly toxic traditional chemotherapy. Even with chemotherapy, the majority of patients with advanced disease like Sasha's would die from their melanoma within a year. But Sasha's doctors explained that now the standard treatment for melanoma is not chemotherapy, but immunotherapy, treatments that help Sasha's own immune system fight his cancer. Our immune system does more than fight external pathogens. There are also immune mechanisms that protect us against cancerous cells in our own body. Many cancers express specific proteins that are not typically found in normal tissues. These tumor antigens can be taken up by antigen-presenting cells, like dendritic cells, and presented to T cells in the draining lymph nodes. These T cells can then undergo activation and differentiation into cytotoxic T lymphocytes, which are mainly CD8 T cells. These effector T cells can then travel via the bloodstream to the tumor, where they recognize cancer cells and kill them. It's thought that many cancerous cells are eliminated by the immune system before they have a chance to grow and become clinically apparent. Unfortunately, this doesn't always occur, in part because many cancers have mechanisms that actively inhibit anti-tumor immune responses. For example, tumors can express cytokines, like IL-10, that inhibit T-cell immune responses, and they can attract cells like regulatory T-cells to the local environment that can actually inhibit the body's immune response to the cancer. 
cancer immunotherapies seek to boost anti-tumor immune responses, either by using cancer vaccines to directly stimulate tumor-specific immunity or by counteracting tumor-induced immune suppression of T cells that have been held in check by the tumor. Sasha was enrolled in a clinical trial that involves a strategy called checkpoint blockade, which has shown promise in patients with melanoma and many other tumors. The normal immune system contains many checkpoints in which specific immune inhibitory molecules prevent the uncontrolled activation of T-cells. One example is CTLA-4, which normally shuts off T-cell activation. A second example is the molecule program death one or PD-1, which is expressed on effector T-cells and inhibits their function. This inhibition occurs when PD-1-expressing effector T cells encounter PD-1 ligand on tumor cells and other immune cells. When immune checkpoints like these are blocked, T cell responses are enhanced, allowing them to kill cancer cells. In other words, the breaks are released. Sasha was treated with a combination of two drugs that block immune checkpoints. The first was a monoclonal antibody that binds to and blocks the activity of CTLA-4. The second was a monoclonal antibody that blocks PD-1. Sasha's trial was designed to test if the combination of two checkpoint inhibitors works better than just one. Although checkpoint blockade has been shown to be effective, the high degree of T-cell activation that results often leads to a substantial number of immune-related adverse events. During his therapy, Sasha developed both T-cell-mediated dermatitis and colitis, which were managed with corticosteroids and supportive therapy. Despite his difficult course, Sasha was fortunate to be among the subset of melanoma patients who have a dramatic response to combination checkpoint blockade immunotherapy. On a repeat CT scan, after only two months of treatment, his lung nodules had disappeared. Three years after his diagnosis, Sasha is now off treatment and remains cancer-free.